Welcome to Matters Financial and Geopolitical for the first time in 2019. Thank you for stopping by. Allow me to wish you a wonderful 2019 and uh, let everything you set out to do you achieve and you achieve it with a facility that you never expected. On that note, this is uh, the Happy New Year message that Donald Trump posted um, on uh, New Year's Eve, I think it was. Typically, Trumpian. Home Thoughts NASA rang in the new year on Tuesday with a historic flyby of the furthest, and quite possibly the oldest cosmic body ever explored by humankind, a tiny distant world called Ultima Thule. Series of anxiously awaited phone home signals arrived after 10.30 a.m., indicating that the spacecraft had made it intact through the risky high-speed encounter. The flyby took place about a billion miles beyond Pluto, which was until now the most faraway world ever visited by up close by a spacecraft. Hurtling through space at the speed of 32,000 miles per hour, the spacecraft made its closest approach within 2,200 miles of the surface of Ultima Thule. This is a night none of us are going to forget. Um, that was Brian May, who holds an advanced degree in astrophysics, besides being the guitarist for Queen. And that took me back to. Don DeLillo, the specialist, is monitoring data on his mission console when a voice breaks in, voice that carried with it a strange and unspecifiable poignancy. The voice, in contrast to Colorado's metallic pigeon, is a melange of repartee, laughter and song, with a quality of purest, sweetest sadness. Somehow, we are picking up signals from radio programs in 40. 50, 60 years ago. Joali apparently is the traditional Maldivian hammock and is the most fashionable way to relax on a Maldivian beach. It certainly looks lovely. Why time slows down when we're afraid, speeds up as we age and gets warped on vacation. Our memory is never a precise duplicate of the original, but a continuing act of creation. Our perception of time is almost everything that occurred a year ago appears as having taken place in either significantly further in the past, a different lifetime, or significantly more recently, this feels like just last month. It turns out to be a defining feature of how the human mind works, the science of which is at first unsettling and then strangely comforting and altogether intensely interesting. Among the most interesting illustrations of mind time is the incredible elasticity of how we experience time. Where is it, this present? William Jones famously wondered. It has melted in our grasp, fled ere we could touch it, gone in the instant of becoming. For instance, Hammond points out, we slow time down when gripped by mortal fear. The cliché about the slow motion car crash is in fact a cognitive reality. And I can vouch for that because we'd gone to Pasava and it was really late, about 6, 6.30. I was trying to keep up with our friends. and We were already within the park with still 50 kilometers to go. And boom, I hit a rock. And I must say the Nissan is an incredible car. But what I remember is as we rolled over, I reached out with my, my hand towards my wife and it felt like that process of reaching out and then she grabbed it and it felt as if it was an eternity and as if she was bringing me back from certain death. It was quite an extraordinary experience. I'm vouching the cliche about the slow motion car crash is a cognitive reality. Um, and then talking about intense fear that you overestimate the time. Um, inversely, time seems to speed up as we get older. I can vouch for that as well. A phenomenon which competing theories have attempted to make light, one known as the proportionality theory, uses pure mathematics 
and this is interesting, we're most likely to vividly remember experiences we had between the ages of 15 and 25, what the social sciences might simply call nostalgia, psychologists have termed the reminiscence bump. And Hammond argues it could be the key to why we feel like time speeds up as we get older. This is an epic Nairobi city under the sun shot by Mian Takil Khan. Uh, really a great photograph. Mount Etna erupted a few days back. That's from David Inglis. I couldn't resist this from Michael Jordan. Exponential. If a vampire were to feed once a day and turn each of its victims into a vampire, the entire human population would become vampires in just over a month. Something to think about from Michael Jordan. This is a section of the Nairobi Mombasa Highway in 1968 when I was three. Picture courtesy of Grunty by History K.E. That road is one of my favorite roads of all times. I've been up and down it. I don't go up and down it anymore because it's just too many trucks. Jack Kerouac's on the road, nothing behind me, everything ahead of me, as it is ever so on 